Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Mama Rose Show with your host, Mama Rose. We are so excited today to have such a fabulous artist, you know, actor, singer, performer, everything all rolled into one. And you've got to stay tuned because we have an exclusive. Now I'm so excited to welcome the sexy and sultry Matthew Scott Montgomery. How are you, darling? Hey. I am so happy to be here, darling. Sexy, sultry, fabulous. We're talking about you, right, Mama Rose? Well, of course, <laughs> but you know, we like to pass it on. We like to spread it around. You can share it. You look so beautiful today. I love, I love the blue. I love the pearls. You're, you're so fabulous. Oh, thank you. And so are you. Oh, thanks. Thank you. So, of course, we're facing such a crazy world currently, but how are you handling quarantine? Well, um, I'm growing out my hair. <laughs> um, I was actually going to shave later today, but I was like, I want to have proof that all of this existed. This is uh, three months, no haircut, and I'm serving you like biblical realness, I guess. Um, you know, all things considered, I have nothing to complain about. So, um, you know, it was a big hiccup for all of us. It, it's been tricky for work and things like that. I moved back in with my parents for a while, which was interesting. But I am back in LA um, and, uh, you know, I've hit the ground running since I've been back. Um, but I have nothing to complain about. I, I've been healthy. And um, I, how have you been? How have you been handling all of it? <laughs> Taking it day to day. It's so much fun here in New York City with everything shut down. I mean, basically the whole world has shut down. But I mean, yeah. down home, you know, it's, it's been interesting. Yes, we have to make our homes uh, our political statements and our fabulousness for sure. You started your career, you know, with the incredibly talented Del Shores, who wrote Yellow, among other fabulous things. But what was this experience like? Del's just the most incredible playwright and person and director. And, you know, it was my first big thing when I moved here to L.A., um, which was 10 years ago now, which is so crazy, but to do his show Yellow, um, and we ran for a year and, you know, won a whole lot of awards. And I just, it was the biggest blessing ever. I mean, everything that I have in my career, I really owe to him and to that experience. Um, I just saw the notice online, just auditioned for it, walked in. Um, it was one of those roles, the character I play was Kendall, Kendall Parker. Um, and uh, it was one of those roles where when you read it, I was like, oh my gosh, I absolutely have to do this. This is me. It's the hardest I've ever worked on an audition and a callback. And I, I'm still, I still like pinch myself thinking about that experience because Del Shores, just the way that he writes, um, when I, after that show, people were like, did he write that for you? And I was like, no. And they're like, did you improv or make something? I was like, no, he wrote out every um, every uh, or I don't know, just the way that he writes. He's the most gifted playwright. And it was just one of the great honors of my life and career to get to start off my career doing a show like Yellow. You joined the Disney team in <laughs> such shows as Sunny with a Chance, Shake It Up, Austin and Alley, and So Random. What was this experience like? Um, you know, it was a whirlwind. Um, I got cast in the pilot for Shake It Up while I was doing Yellow, literally. So like I was shooting Shake It Up during the day and I was on stage at night. Um, and it was a casting director who, who I had met, who came to see me in Yellow actually, and was like, hmm, and then kept bringing me back for Disney stuff. So again, we got to give it, give it to Del Shores because you know, it, it was like a perfect alignment of having the opportunity to showcase myself in Yellow that ended up giving me the Disney opportunities that I had. Disney was great. I mean, it all happened so fast and they, they work you really hard. And I think it was a good crash course for me. Um, and it was, it's like a nice bridge to between doing theater and film and television because, you know, you have the live audience and you're taping with the live audience. Um, it was for children, which is not something I am... Um, uh, which was an adjustment for me. Um, the show Yellow was about, um, you know, complicated domestic matters and um, adultery and, and domestic abuse and uh, religion and sexuality. And then I was, you know, being very silly on Disney Channel. So, you know, I got to stretch my actor muscles in so many different ways in such a short amount of time. And it was a great crash course 
in uh, some of the work that I got to do later. I had a really incredibly positive experience with them, um, and I would love to work with Disney again. <laughs> you starred as Andrew in the feature film Southern Baptist Sissies. Now, yes. what was this experience like working with some of the biggest names in the business? I have so many huge takeaways from that experience, two of which were working with Dale Dickey and Leslie Jordan. I mean, I revere both of them so much. Um, I'm such a massive fan of both of them. And they're so funny and heartbreaking in Southern Baptist Sissies because they're a bit of the comedic relief, but they're also, they both have devastating backstories. And Andrew gets to interact with both of them. In, in the film and in the play, you have like the four sissies and then you have uh, uh, Dale and Leslie and they're kind of separate stories that kind of interweave. And Andrew's the character that kind of bridges the gap a little bit. So I got to do, you know, some really profound dramatic work work that they did that I just got to to react to in the moment with Dale and Leslie. Leslie Jordan, especially through quarantine and stuff, I feel like he's one of been, been one of the bright shining lights of 2020 that so many people have gotten to discover him. Um, but he's such an incredible, nuanced, dramatic actor as well. I hope more and more people watch Southern Baptist Sissies on Broadway HD and different places they can find it um, to see the work that... Um, that he does and Dale does in that show. And everyone, and Willem, who's a friend of mine who I got to meet doing that film as well. Willem's an incredible actor and he and I shared a dressing room and we got really close during that experience. Um, it was definitely a difference between Disney and doing that. Now you're also noted for, you know, uh, musical theater and, you know, your theatrical experiences and extravaganzas, winning awards all over the place. What are some of your favorite theatrical experiences? Well, the last couple of years, I've kind of fallen into doing like jukebox musicals. And what that means basically is um, there's this place called Rockwell Table and Stage here in LA that's kind of uh, known for doing musicals like this and different other spaces like Three Clubs and El Cid that I've been performing in doing, um, like musical versions of movies, but like I Know What You Did Last Summer or A Walk to Remember or Anchorman, where they take pop songs from that era and interweave them in the story. So I Know What You Did Last Summer is all 90s songs, which I absolutely love. Um, that's been a whole lot of fun. I did, um, probably my favorite thing theatrically that I've done is I, I wrote a two-person play that I starred in called Dead Boys um, that, that ran for um, a year and a half or so around different places in LA, and that was, that was a piece that I don't think I would have had the courage and knowledge to write that without Del. This is just a Del Shores interview. I'm just talking about Del today. Um, but truly, you know, as I learned from him as a playwright and there was kind of things that I wanted to do as an actor that I hadn't been cast in yet. I was like, I'll just write it for myself and kind of worked on this story. And Dead Boys was um, a story about Wow, which is interesting now being in quarantine, but it's about two guys that are trapped in the basement of their old high school at the end of the world. And one is the gay kid in school who used to get beat up all the time. And the other guy was a Mexican American student who was his bully. But as they're trapped in this environment, they start to relive high school a little bit and discover that they have way more in common than they thought that they did before. And it deals with um, racial bias and sexuality and religion growing up in a private Christian school and it turns into kind of an interracial love story. That whole play actually is on my YouTube and some people have discovered it throughout quarantine. That was, you know, doing musical theater, like jukebox style satisfying because you get the live audience fun of the pop culture references and it's zany and a total blast. But doing a show like Dead Boys where it's a two person drama was satisfying in a different way because you got the catharsis of being seen and seeing one other person and having to trust them on stage. I've been very blessed with theatrical opportunities here in LA. I mean, a lot of time you don't think of LA as a theater town, but right now it's a little bit tricky, um, but there is some really great theater here. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been waiting so patiently while we talk about Dale Shores. Oh, and of course, <laughs> Scott Montgomery. Uh, we have an exclusive for you. Now, Matthew Scott Montgomery will be starring in an original Clue interactive mystery musical that is one of a kind, like Matthew Scott Montgomery, of course. Please tell us about this murder mystery musical. What character are you playing? And when do you foresee us being able to see this and where? 
Well, I'm so pleased to have the Mama Rose show to make this announcement. And by the way, you are one of a kind. And I'm so grateful that you're having me on today and giving me the platform to share this news. Um, yeah, again, with quarantine happening, we've been trying to figure out ways to make theater happen. And there's a producer who is doing something that has never been done before. That is a live musical that will be based off of the board game Clue. Um, it's gonna be on Twitch, which is a streaming platform, and it's gonna come out in early July. We actually start tech rehearsals tonight. I'm in my apartment right now, but what you can't see is I have lights and camera and microphone set up, and it's you're gonna be voting live in person while you're watching it. What's, who's the killer? Who is it? Is it you know Colonel Mustard in the kitchen with the wrench? Um, and our songs that we will be singing live will depend on what the audience chooses. And you will get a certain ending if you guess the killer correctly, and you will get a different ending if the audience fails to guess correctly. It's really, really exciting. Um, and uh, right now we're still figuring out the exact dates on it, um, but I'm thinking it's gonna be, we've been told it's gonna be the beginning of July on Twitch, and I will be posting a lot about it on my social media. My Instagram is Matthew underscore Scott underscore Montgomery. I know that's a lot, but just search Matthew Scott. It's the one with the blue check ne next to it. And I'll have all the information up there as soon as possible. And of course, Mama Rose, I'm gonna send it your way uh, once it comes out, uh, once the information comes out. And um, I get to be a villain in this show. And I get to sing some of your favorite villain songs from Disney movies. Um, and uh, it's gonna be really exciting. I feel really honored to be part of this brand new experience. And maybe this is gonna be the way theater will be for a while, but you'll have to tune in and see how it all works out. Well, you know that I'm gonna be tuning in and ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you better tune in too, because this is a one of a kind opportunity. It's gonna be full of fun, you know, villains and guessing and, you know, typing in and, figuring out who has done it. And I wonder if it'll be Matthew Scott. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> now, this has been so much fun, but I want to ask you one last question. For those artists that are out there that are dealing with such difficult times in their life that want to look for something positive, what advice would you give them for starting out in a career or continuing their career as such a great artist such as yourself? Well, it's a really tricky time, probably the trickiest time in modern American history for so many of us, for so many different reasons. Um, and, uh, you know, the fact that I'm doing this Twitch musical, it's like we're trying to adapt to the landscape that we have. Um, this advice might sound cliche, but I can't, I can't re reiterate enough how true this is. You have to be true to yourself and do you, whatever that is. Um, what's a gift of 2020 in a way is a lot of the rules are being thrown out. Everything we thought we had to do or have been taught as a way either systemically or you know, as a blueprint of what you're supposed to do to make it or anything like that or survive. A lot of that has been completely thrown out, through the, thrown out the window and it's up to us to take the agency of ourselves and, and create the world around us that we want to live in. And as an artist, we're, we're, we're creatives, we get the gift of that. So whether that's TikTok, whether that's writing something on your own, putting yourself up on Twitch, uh, don't listen to anyone else who tells you how to do something or, or the correct way to do it because the rules are gone. It's up to you to show us who you are. And Leslie Jordan's a great example of him just being himself online is bringing so many people joy. The truer you are to yourself, um, and the more yourself you are, the more you'll, more people will love you and you will be seen. And it's, especially for young people, it might be hard to take that in because you're still figuring out who you are. Um, especially for my LGBTQIA plus people, I want to say that you're beautiful and perfectly made the way that God made you. He loves you and he wants you, he doesn't want you to dim your light. He wants to, you to shine it as bright as possible. And honey, I'll tell you something, especially after this quarantine, you thought I was gay before. I want to be gayer than I've ever been. I'm talking, I'm still figuring out what exactly that is, but like 2020 makes me want to be the absolute gayest version of myself. If, if that sounds gay, good, I'm in. That's what I have to say. I want to thank you so much for joining us here at the Mama Rose Show. And please follow Matthew Scott Montgomery and Mama Rose, of course, to find out when this 
fabulous murder mystery musical will be coming out, but also for the fabulous things that we do for this show and beyond. Thank you so much for having me. I love you so much. What an honor to be here today and happy Pride Month. And we love you and happy Pride Month to you. And soon we will be together sharing a stage. I can't wait, yes. <laughs>